Some critics say modern technology, especially the internet, distances us from human contact and generally dumbs us down. But Clive Thompson has a very different view. He's the author of Smarter Than You Think, how technology is changing our minds for the better. And he's here with us this morning. Clive, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we've, we've sort of had panics over technology before, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. I mean, every new media that comes along, people tend to freak out at first because uh, they're worried it's going to change everything in life. So writing comes along 3,000 years ago, and people worry it's going to degrade our memory. Uh, radio comes along, people worry about uh, the effect on, on kids. Telephone, people thought we would never socialize again because we'd stay inside <laughs> our houses. Why would you visit a friend if you'd call them and talk to them? So that's the end of socializing. Yeah. Now, Clive, I, I am the skeptic. Anthony's the nice one. I'm always the one that says, <laughs> I, I don't believe this. But I thought what was interesting in your vernacular is that you basically say that because we are tweeting more and we are using other forms of social interaction, we're writing more than we ever did before. That's right. I actually tried to calculate uh, how much writing goes on every day. Uh, I figured it's rough. It's about three and a half trillion words roughly equal to the entire contents of the Library of Congress every day, right? So that's a huge amount of writing. This never happened before but in society. But is it worthwhile writing? Well, you know, most <laughs> of it's probably quite bad, right? But the good stuff always floats to the top. That's what happens over and over again. This is the history of media. We get, we get a new surplus of stuff, and we sort of have to figure out how to get the good stuff up to the top. We do the same thing over and over again. We rely on what other people are doing. We figure out where the authority lies in these new mediums. Uh, it, it's kind of like actually what happened with books. You get a flood of books. What do you do with it? Well, you have to invent libraries. You have to invent our, you know, hierarchies of knowledge. We're in the middle of, a, of achieving that right now with the online world. What about this anti-social question? I mean, you mentioned it with the telephone. Obviously, the same argument is being made about Facebook, that you know, everybody's mm, only connecting yeah. over this, this website, but there's not real actual sort of intimate contact with friends. Yeah, uh, that, uh, that's, a, that's a, something people say a lot, but it's, it doesn't seem to be actually true. Every time you do a study of people, and how, uh, the ones that, that do a lot of online contact, they also do a lot of offline contact. It seems to actually reinforce the two. Mm. People, people get this idea that because people are communicating more, that something must be lost, you know, that you have to be losing the face-to-face -face contact. But that doesn't seem to be true in any of the studies. When they look at people, teenagers that text more, they're the ones that also hang out with their friends more, according to Pew Internet Studies. But when you look at some fields, like medicine, I mean, you want a doctor who has a lot of things in, in the memory bank. You don't want a doctor that's relying on Googling. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a difference in how it affects certain professions? Definitely what you're seeing now is people have access to a lot more information outside their heads. They, they, they reach for it more often. Um, I don't think that actually degrades the stuff that you know if it's stuff that you're actually passionate about. You know, when, you're, when you really care about something, that's the stuff that sticks inside your head. So the trick with memory is how to get people to be passionate about those subjects so they'll learn it and get it inside their heads. Mm -hmm. But the outside access, we've always had that. We've got more of it now, and I think it actually makes us better thinkers. Do you think because, this, that's what's making us smarter? Absolutely. It's, it's definitely one of the things that comes along, because you get an intuition, you have a, you have a quick question to something, and ordinarily, in the old days, you wouldn't look that up. Encyclopedia right. Britannica, they did a study, they found that people looked at their, at their encyclopedias once a year, right? <laughs> so that you buy it, you look at it once a year, right? Now you look at Google more often than that, so you're actually learning more. Do you think that kids are better writers because they're texting more than our generation? Uh, absolutely. I, I, th I think that when, whenever I talk to teachers, I said one thing that really matters, getting kids to write well, is to have an audience, to have a sense of someone you're talking to. Because when you just write for your classroom, it feels a little artificial. Mm -hmm. And kids, when they're online, they have an audience. They're writing 40% more than they ever did before. Yeah. And they're often writing longer and more complicated. And the trick is how to get that stuff into the classroom to make them write better there, right. too. And they have to impress their friends. And they have to impress their friends. Clive Thompson, thanks so much.